Ishida Mitsunari, Japanese samurai and commander of the Western Army, is eager to engage the enemy. On the opposite side, Tokugawa Ieyasu, the most powerful member of the Council of Five Elders, is commanding the Eastern Army. Ishida has the high ground of a valley, so tactically speaking, he has got favourable terrain and numerical superiority. And yet, the warlord Tokugawa still has a grin on his face. These are the premises of the greatest samurai battle in Japanese history. Sekigahara no Tatakai, the Battle of Sekigahara. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metron speaking and today is a great day for all of you who love Japanese history. And I say that not only because of the topic of this video, the greatest samurai battle in history, but also because as we speak right now, Shad from Shad Diversity Channel has published a massive video collaboration between me and Shad, so you will find me as well, half an hour of content where we together join forces to compare medieval European castles and Japanese castles, layout, walls, materials, you name it. So make sure that after you watch this video, click the description in the link in the description below and go check out this video collaboration. You can't miss it. Anyways, let's get back to the topic at hand. Today we're going to talk about... Well, actually, I'm going to have Shad say that for us. Today we're going to talk about... The Battle of the Sekigahara! <laughs> I've got 12 years of academic studies of Japanese and he just sounds cooler when he says that. It's very cool sour style. Back to the topic. So first off, let's learn what happened during the battle itself. Once we establish that, we will learn all the surrounding details that led to that very conflict, to that very moment. We will study the historical background, what happens in this era, the Sengoku Jidai. We will learn the uh, lords involved, the warlords that were involved, and also the location itself. Initial forces deployed by the Western Army 120,000. Initial forces deployed by the Eastern Army 75,000. 30,000 led by Tokugawa himself, and further 40,000 led by his subordinates. Tokugawa also managed to sneak in an extra supply of aquebuses, and its gunpowder was dry as the Eastern Army had experienced better weather, whereas some of the gunpowder of the Western Army was wet due to bad weather and having had to march in the rain. Even though the Western Army had initial superiority in numbers, these will be the actual final numbers during the battle. So the very first thing you will have noticed is that there is a big difference in numbers in the actual strength of the two factions between the initial number of men deployed and the actual number of troops fighting for these factions. This happened because one of the main reasons why the Eastern Army will have a decisive victory is that many daimyo from the Western side will defect in favour of the Eastern Army during the battle. Although this was a result of careful planning, exchanges of letters and promises made by Tokugawa Ieyasu himself to these feudal lords carried over a period of few months prior to the actual battle. Some of these daimyo will actually fight against Ishida, while others will remain neutral during the conflict. Although such behaviours might sound odd to us, the concept of switching sides was not rare in the Sengoku Jidai, and in fact, the undisputed command of Tokugawa over a cohesive force of loyal vassals and allies was the exception to the rule. While the Western Army under Ishida, which was a disjointed and quarrelsome coalition of rival lords, was more typical of this era. The night before, it had rained. The ground was muddy and a thick fog was reducing visibility. Scouts from both sides could sense the enemy nearby, but the two opposing factions couldn't see each other. Early in the morning, a light wind will clear the remaining mist and the two armies will behold each other's positioning. The battle began with the charge of Fukushima Masanori, the leader of the advance guard of the Eastern Army from Tokugawa left flank against the Western Army right centre. This occurred along the Fuji River. Wanting to support the attack of his retainer, Tokugawa will command his centre and right flank also to attack against the Western Army's left. This is when things started to become problematic for the Western Army. The centre of the Western Army was still free from engagement, so Ishida commanded Shimazu Yoshihiro and his unit to support the troops on the right flank, but Shimazu refused. It is still debated if the Mori faction refused to obey Ishida's commands out of lack of respect for the general, 
or because of secret agreements with Tokugawa. In any case, this allowed Fukushima from the Eastern Army to gain ground. However, exposing his flank to Otani Yoshitsugu's forces, stationed on the other side of the river. Yoshitsugu took advantage of that situation and charged against Fukushima. A second strong unit was stationed on Mount Matsu, just past Otani's troops, Kobayakawa's forces. If these forces had also attacked Fukushima, the situation would have turned in favour of the Western Army. But Kobayakawa was one of the daimyo who had been in contact with Tokugawa and decided to remain neutral at this point. As the battle grew more intense, Tokugawa ordered some gunmen to fire in the direction of Kobayakawa as to force him into making an actual decision. And Kobayakawa, pressured by the danger of the Tanigashima Teppo, finally decided to completely switch sides and assaulted his former ally, Otani. Otani stood strong at first, as his forces, differently from other units in the Western Army, still had dry gunpowder and fired intensively against Kobayakawa's troops, rendering the charge of 16,000 men completely ineffective. But Otani was now completely outnumbered, as more and more generals from the Eastern Army started to engage him. Witnessing this, four more Western Army's generals switched sides, finally turning the tide of the battle. With Otani's forces retreating, Ishida's right flank was completely destroyed and the center started to push back. As he was retreating, Ishida's troops were once again betrayed by the Mori clan, which refused to move to engage the Eastern Army. And since Mori's troops constituted the front line on Mount Nangu, this prevented also the movement of the Chosokabe army, which was deployed behind the Mori clan. Ishida was defeated and later on executed, turning the battle of Sekigahara into a decisive victory of the Eastern Army. Fun fact! Apparently the samurai legend Miyamoto Musashi was present at the Battle of Sekigahara as a combatant for the Western Army and managed to not only to fight and survive, but survive unscathed. Now of course this is more of a historical rumour, a little bit of a legend. Miyamoto Musashi himself is never uh, too specific on his book, as he does mention that he took, did take place two battles, but he does say, he only tells us that he took place to six battles in his youth. He never really mentioned Sekigahara. So, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But it's still a very cool fun fact. In Japanese history, there is a specific time period you often refer to when talking about war, battle and samurai, the Sengoku Jidai. Sengoku meaning warring states. The character we read Seng in Onyomi means war, combat, battle, and in Kunyomi is Tatakau. The character we read Goku in Onyomi means country, and in Kunyomi is read Kuni. For those of you who are not trained in Japanese, consider that even when changing the reading, the semantic value, the meaning, remains the same. We are talking about almost 150 years of near-constant military conflicts, struggle for domination and social upheaval. So what makes the Battle of Sekigahara stand out so significantly in the midst of such political distress? Formally, the Sengoku period starts with the outbreak of a nationwide war, the so-called Onin War which involved daimyo from several regions of Japan and the Ashikaga shogunate. So one major difference between the Muromachi period and the Sengoku period is the disintegration of the power of the shogunate, hence the lack of central control, which will lead to the mass power struggle that will define the Sengoku period. There were quite a few major conflicts during the long and drawn out Sengoku period, and a few have to be mentioned. 1590, we have the siege of Odawara when Toyotomi Hideyoshi defeats the Hojo clan and manages to unify Japan under his rule. 1600. We have the Battle of Sekigahara. 1615. The Siege of Osaka. The effective stamping of the last of the Toyotomi opposition to the Tokugawa shogunate. There are a few key figures that need to be briefly explained in order to understand who was fighting who. Oda Nobunaga and his two main retainers, Tokugawa Ieyasu and Toyotomi Hideyoshi. These are considered the three main warlords who played a crucial role in the unification of Japan. So when talking about the Battle of Sekigahara, we are talking about the final major battle of the conflict between the Eastern Army, which was made of several daimyo from the Eastern Provinces of Japan, and the Western Army, made of daimyo belonging to the Western Provinces of Japan. At this time, Nobunaga was already dead. The Eastern Army was led by Tokugawa Ieyasu himself and many other commanders, while the Western Army was made of loyalists to Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Now notice that I did not say that it was led by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and that is because at the time the battle took place, Toyotomi was also dead, and the army was formally commanded by Ishida Mitsunari, who was a loyalist of Toyotomi. Sekigahara 
Sekigahara or Sekigahara Cho is a town located in Fuwa District, Gifu Prefecture, Japan. Gifu Prefecture or Gifu Keng is a prefecture in the Chubu region of central Japan. Its capital is the city of Gifu. Located in the center of Japan, it has long played an important part as the crossroads of Japan, connecting the east to the west. During the Sengoku period, many people referred to Gifu by saying, Control Gifu and you control Japan. All right, member ones, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And also remember that if you go to Shad Diversity channel, you can check out this massive video collaboration between me and Shad. And so if you did enjoy this video, which was about the battle of the Sekigahara, then I'm sure that you will also appreciate the video about Japanese castles and European castles. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.